So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about TIG welding. Well, in specific, some upgrades to my TIG welding machine. Now I have an older Lincoln TIG Precision 225. Doesn't have all that uh, digital stuff on it like the modern TIGs do, but it works quite well. I like it and for what I paid for it, you know, 15 years ago, I'm not upgrading that anytime soon. So anyway, today specifically, I'm going to be installing a TIG button which I first saw on this old Tony's channel. He was reviewing some TIG torches and I saw this TIG button and I like, I gotta have one of those because I'm so sick of using the foot pedal, dragging a thing around. Most of the projects I work on are big, you know, so I'm not just sitting at a bench and welding where it's just great to have a foot pedal. And I like foot pedals, but when you gotta constantly move that thing back and forth across a 15 foot long workpiece, dragging around obstacles, that's no fun. So I'm upgrading, I'm gonna install this TIG button and I'm gonna show you how it works, at least for me. It, I'm sure it's gonna take some practice to use it. Anyway, first let me show you my TIG machine and then the TIG button I purchased, where I got it, and then I'm gonna install it. So bear with me. So this is my TIG. It's an older Lincoln Precision TIG 225. I like it, works good for me. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but I do have a, a dial for pulse frequency. I like it. I've recently upgraded and put uh, a Superflex hose on here, and I actually switched out to a stubby gas lens and a, uh, I forget what they call this, the, the, the torch that you can rotate the head. I love that, okay? Really love that. So uh, I'm gonna complete this upgrade by putting the TIG button on. Now, we'll show you what's, what totally came in the box, but first I wanna explain one thing. When you order, if you decide to order one of these from uh, Dave, this is the most important part that he needs to know. What machine you have so he can get you the right connector plug, because this is specific to different machines, right? And this is the one for mine. So you either call Dave or email him and he'll tell you if he makes a connector for your machine. So this will basically, here's the plug for my foot pedal. This will replace that. And uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty simple. So you should be able to swap easily from the TIG button to the foot pedal just by unplugging that and you know, plugging one or the other in. So here's what come in the box, right? Well, first let me show you the, where you can get this if you're interested. I, uh, I called Dave because I saw, I previously mentioned this uh, on this old Tony video, you know, one of his TIG welding ones. TIGcontrol.com is the website. The fellow's name is Dave Vogel. Here's his phone number. Give him a call if you're interested in one of these. This cost me $239. That included shipping. And I believe that's just to the lower 48 U.S. states. So, you know, if you're somewhere else, you may have to pay more for shipping. So $239, I think that's a pretty good deal if this thing works the way it's supposed to. And this is what come in the box. First, we got two instruction sheets. This just tells you how to install the system. It's very simple. You cannot screw it up. All the cable connectors plug in one place only, so you can't reverse anything. Uh, like I said, you cannot screw it up. Uh, and the other sheet is kind of like some tips on how to install your pressure sensor button on your torch and this one's like using some silicone tape i think i may try that right they also give you some a velcro strap if you want to use that you can use zip ties rubber bands electrical tape that's that's up to you so here's what come in the box we got a power supply we got the control unit and yes, this little box needs its own 110 power, right? So you gotta have a power source handy, which usually isn't an issue when you're welding, right? Uh, here's the length of cable that runs down your, your hose. Here's the button, plugs in the end of the cable. Uh, here's the connector we already spoke about, a couple zip ties, some Velcro, right? So this control box will mount somewhere on your machine close enough so that you can plug this plug in. I think I'm just gonna double-sided tape it right there, you know, and then I'll have plenty of room to plug that in. It's not like you don't have a real long lead on this, so you can't plug it in far away from the machine. You, you best off to mount that to the machine, right? The cable on the, the cable on the wall wart looks to be about eight feet long, so, you know, you can have your 110 plug for that a little distance away. All right, so let me get this thing installed, and then we will test it out. Okay, we have it installed, right? Took me 22 minutes, I set a timer. 
uh, you know, and I pretty much just zip tied everything right down my hose. Okay, I didn't mention before, but I do not have a water cooled torch, so I never had a need for one of those sheaths that goes around your, your cables, but it's recommended, highly recommended to have a sheath when you, when, when you, in this situation with this cable here. So I got to purchase one of those and install it. It seems like these upgrades never end. Anyway, I haven't even turned this on yet. I haven't even turned the machine on yet. I wanted to show you the installation. So for right now, I just used the supplied Velcro strap to secure the button to my torch because I'm sure I'm going to have to play with this, move it around where it's comfortable. Uh, zip tied all the way down the length of my hose. I only have a 15 foot hose. So they give you enough cable to do a 25 foot hose. So this is just coiled up and sitting in my drawer here. Okay. And again, here's the connector. I just zip tied everything up nice and neat. Decided to mount the box to the side of the welder here, set back a little bit. So these were kind of recessed from the front of the machine to keep them from getting bumped. And I forgot to also mention that you need to install, where's it at here? A ground wire. There's a ground wire on the, on the end of this plug. And I just removed the screw from my machine here, put a, put a ring connector on the end of the ground wire, screwed that back in. And as far as the, the power for the 110 for this unit, um, I was wrong. The, the length of this cable is only about four foot max. But fortunately for me, I actually happen to have a 110 outlet in the back of my welder. Uh, a lot of welders do do that, but not all. So I kind of got lucky there. I don't have to run an extension cord. So whenever my machine has power, the 110 outlet has power, this has power. Okay, so there we go. Let's turn it on. Just see if uh, we have any kind of issues. All right, so we got, I saw a flashing light there. I believe that the, the flashing green light means everything is okay. Okay, the next thing to do is test this out. So let me put on my coat and my hood and uh, we'll uh, see how that button works. Okay, we're gonna test this, see how it works. Uh, I'm gonna use my thumb for this test. All right, this is the first use. All right, pressure, Oh, started right up. Okay, I'm pushing pretty hard, so that's full throttle. I'm running at 88 amps. Now remember, this isn't a test of my wel welding abilities here, guys. This is just seeing how the button performs. Okay, now I'm gonna throttle back. Ooh, doesn't take a whole lot of pressure there. I'm probably running 20% power, or just guessing here, looking at the puddle size. Back to full throttle. That was smooth. I like it down it's real sensitive very sensitive and it's I like it it's working good you know I'm usually either blowing full throttle or I'm dialing back to end the weld I don't usually do a whole lot of mid-range adjustment I do that with my amperage control but that's just me there's full throttle all right wow I'm impressed I am impressed. Again, I'm just running 88 amps here, a 330 second tungsten on carbon steel. Might be hard for you to see here. Oh, this is hot. It's, uh... Okay, you can see there where I was running full throttle and then I tapered back and then full throttle, tapered back and ended full throttle. I'm impressed. That, that worked pretty, pretty good. Well, I can see a couple things here. Um, one, I'm going to have to fiddle with where uh, I keep the control button. For now, I'm just going to leave the Velcro on here until I find a place I want to maybe permanently mount it, if I, if I do. Uh, I may, you know, I may need to, to alternate which finger you use. You know, like I was using my thumb there, but, uh, you know, I may want to use my index finger. And then, you know, sometimes when you want to choke up, I may use my pointer finger. Sorry, I'm probably naming my fingers wrong here, <laughs> but you get the point. So I guess positioning this is just going to take some trial and error and practice use. But so far, uh, 
I'm really impressed. The button is very sensitive. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of pressure actually to get the full throttle and doesn't seem to take a whole lot to throttle back. Uh, Got to get used to it, but so far I, I like it a lot. Uh, now it's time to get a project under my belt, which I'm about to do, start welding up a table base and maybe I'll show you some results after that. All right, so I've got a little bit of welding under my belt here now using the TIG button. Um, I finished welding up these two table bases behind me here. They're inch and a half square tube. There's about 120 welds total. Not a lot, I know, but you know, it was enough to get my feet wet with this thing. And I still, I love it. It's working really good. The control, is, it's very, very sensitive. You can actually flash yourself if you brush the button with your finger before you put your hood on. So that's something to be mindful of. It's very sensitive to touch. And uh, it's very easy to throttle from full throttle all the way down to nothing. I mean, you just, more pressure is more, more amps, less pressure. It takes a little getting used to, you know, uh, it's gonna take some practice, but it's working flawlessly. I, I will note though, I only have one concern, and I actually called Dave at TIG Controls about this after I'd been welding for about a half an hour. Because let me tell you, I have an air-cold torch, right? And I was worried about, you know, the, my torch handle obviously was getting very hot. I mean, I was running around 115 amps, you know, weld after weld, starting to warm up, getting uncomfortable in the hand. And uh, I started thinking, hey, is this heat going to have any impact on this pressure sensitive button? And so I called Dave and I asked him, hey Dave, am I, am I risking this by, you know, uh, letting my torch get too hot. And he said, not really. He says, this thing is designed to work in heat. He said, but yes, you can cook it. If you, if you get your torch handle so hot, he said, basically it'd have to be, you know, you could almost not hold it, you know, in order for it to be that hot because it is held together with some adhesives and those adhesives do have a limit. So be mindful of that. Um, another thing is he told me is I asked about replacing the TIG button if I did somehow damage it. And he said, yes, they have uh, replacement uh, little TIG button units for sale at his place. They're 28 bucks, so I went ahead and ordered one. Um, good thing to have, you know, I mean, not only could maybe I cook it, you know, accidentally by just pushing my lock, but you know, you could drop the torch and you could damage the circuit board, you know, who knows what could happen. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. If I would recommend if you do buy a TIG torch from Dave, just go ahead and order an extra TIG button. I mean, why not, right? It's 28 bucks. So, all that being said, uh, I'm very happy with it. It's, it's working the way it should. Uh, I did not miss the foot pedal at all. I really liked, it's almost like running a MIG. You know, I mean, I ran a MIG for 20 years and in addition to other welding, of course, but you know, and it's just kind of like having that button, you know, you squeeze the trigger and you're welding, you know, no, no foot pedal. Um, it's nice not to have to drag that thing around and reposition it every time you just want to make a tack, move from end to end. You know, and it's great. It's just, it's just great. That's all I can say. So anyway, hope this helps some of you guys. Um, please, uh, you know, hey, subscribe if you want to see more videos, you know, especially fabrication and CNC work. Do a lot of CNC videos. Uh, anyway, just got a laser engraver, actually, and I'm going to be doing a review on that shortly. So uh, keep your eyes out, and I'll uh, catch you on the next one.